Today's class is going to be um, on how to use IMAP for expireds and canceled and withdrawn listings. In the past, I've done a class on the process using MLS, but when I took the Stellar class that was taught on using IMAP, they shed so much um, information, shared so much information about how to use IMAP for searching up pre foreclosures, for searching up expireds and canceled and so forth. In our current market, which is what I'm kind of saying is a normal market, it's not suffering, you know, but it's not what it was. This is the time where you have to start working the market. You can't just assume that leads are going to fall in your lap and you need them to constantly be in your pipeline. So you're gonna be using a lot of different methods to lead generate, not just website, not just sphere of influence, but also you would likely and should likely consider using um, and reconnecting with some people that have expired listings or whatever. We know that expired listings usually, most of the time happen because it was overpriced. Um, there are other obstacles that have could have come up, um, so you'll want to tread delicately, but the purpose of this class is to help you find the expired listings in the quickest way possible. So I'm going to share my screen once I um, <clears throat> realize how to do it. I feel like it's a little different every time I do it. Maybe if I go, oh, here we go. Share screen. All right, so right now you should be able to see um, my opening page of my MLS. Is that accurate, Valerie? Can you see that? Okay, great. All right, so normally we would go into matrix and I'll briefly tell you that, you know, I would do, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Okay, I would always start with like a quick residential search and I would click expired in the last, you know, I would usually say 60 days. And um, and I would say, you know, Ocala, and I would just make it as simple um, as possible of the search. But I also used to put a price like 100 plus um, because I wasn't trying to go after an expired that was a flipper or something that needed that kind. Of, so there's a reason for it, but you can choose that, right? So, and then I would go in here and I'd see, oh, it's 85 matches. But the problem with this is it tells you that there's 85 MLS matches, but you then in the past, I would have to go back through and search it up which ones are not relisted, right? Because by the time you do all this work, they could have easily been relisted. So this was the biggest like discomfort I had about working expireds and then also how to keep up with them. So I'm gonna back out a matrix and tell you that if that's the way you've been doing it, the process that I showed you before, we're now gonna go into our um, navigation screen under products and services and head on over to IMAP. This is what the IMAP app location looks like. And when you click on it, it'll open to here, okay? There are other searches that you can do, but today I'm only going to show you how to use the MLS search for expires. If you have further information that you'd like to know about the foreclosure search or the tax search, check the um, seller MLS classes or reach out to me and we can kind of go over it later. Um, in this MLS search, there are all these very basic grid type things, search fields. Um, so we're going to go really simply so that it doesn't overcomplicate the process. Okay. So property class, listing number and grid number, like those don't apply for me and for an expired search. So you will leave those blank. Property class and equals to, and if you look right here, it says all property classifications. You could look up all the different types of expired listings. I personally only wanna work residential, so I'm going to select residential. 
Um, also listing status, the next line, the fourth line down. Um, if you click on this, you can see that there are plenty of things that you can change this field to be searching for, but we want it to say listing status. We want it to stay in the equal to because we only, the equal to means it's only gonna search for what's in the search value. If it says greater than or equal to, it means it's doing a time period. But when it says equal to, it's only going to search what you're saying. So like if I had done the search right now, it would give me all the active residential listings. That's not what I want. I click on it. And if you see here, there are multiple things you can choose from. Canceled, not relisted. Canceled, including the relisted, which I don't know why you would want that. Um, expired, not relisted, and expired, including the relisted. Again, not even sure why you would want it, but it's here. So for today's class, we're going to go through and click expired, not relisted. This is huge, guys. This means that it's going to do an MLS search for us, and it's going to make sure that as of this moment in this search, that the ones that it provides us and the information that it provides us means that it's accurate and that they are not already in MLS. Does it mean that they're not already interviewing other realtors? Realtors? No, that's not what it means. That could all still be going on. And by the time you get to these people, they could have already connected. But what it is doing is saving you probably close to, depending on how many listings you found in MLS, it could easily be saving you 30 minutes to an hour of research of having to find out whether or not the listings have been relisted or not. Okay. So property address, I'm gonna leave it blank because that's not really a part of it. For the list price, like I said, this is a personal preference, but you could leave it open and just include all of them. But for me, I'm gonna say greater than or equal to 200,000. One, two, three, one, two, three. Sorry, I had to count the zeros. Um, you could be super specific as subdivisions and bedrooms and bathrooms. Again, I'm not going to be. You could also be very specific to the city. So if you live and you only want to look for expireds in the Lakeland area, then you put Lakeland or Ocala or Denalyn. If you leave it open, then you come down here and you can also search by specifically a certain area. Um, they're pretty dynamic. Like let's go down to like, excuse me, Lady Lake. Um, Claremont, which we're not in those areas here. I'm trying to get to they are um, populated areas is what it is. And there are previous, so like here's Lakeland. So I'm going to use it. I'm going to do the search map area. It's going to only bring up the Lakeland area. And you can always like, this is what this is for. I could say, I only want, oh, wait, if it'll let me do it. You can circle it right here is what I was trying to say. A region, do you see what I'm saying? Confirm it. And then when it does this search, it's only gonna do it here, okay? And then you hit start search. If you don't want that, then we're going to do the complete map area, but let's say we just do Ocala. So any, re, um, any expireds that have the Ocala address in it, that's what it'll pull up. And so we're gonna hit start search because that's gonna be the simplest option for you guys. And it does take it a minute, it's thinking, but boom, it's big. Hey okay, guys, it's big because there's a lot of Ocala. 2,459 results, right? But what I want to point out here is you could narrow this down. You could narrow this down considerably by saying, I want three or more bedrooms. If you're not looking for the condos that have one or two bedrooms. Um, if you'll notice, they're all expired, all of them down here on the side. Um, and it tells you where, you know, the very specifics, the MLS number, the list price, right? So if you wanted this huge list, you could download the results, which really does not do anything for you. So I'm going to say do not use the download results option because for our office and the way that we would use the information between our CRM with KV Core 
and um, also maybe even sending out mailers, you would want to do the create the labels, okay? So creating labels gives you multiple options. You don't actually have to create mail labels and you can also create by generating the information into a CSV file that can then be loaded into um, KV Core and you can utilize it there to email or I mean, not, not email, excuse me, um, create a print list of what you're gonna send out to people, right? So you can add this data into your KV Core or you can upload the CSV to any other program that you're using to mail out things. Um, so let's go from here. I'm gonna go back and do a new search though before we do that um, because I wanna do it again and make it smaller. So property class equal to residential, active, we're going to not relisted, contains property city. Let's go list price 400. And let's say equal to, we need greater than or equal to three bedrooms and greater than or equal to two bathrooms. So I'm thinking, Let's see if I can do, we can also change it. I thought we could change to county, but you, you don't have to specific. Here we go, county right here. So equal to, and we can select Marion County. So you could go as wide as Marion County. It's probably gonna make for a large search. Let's see, start search. And we got 1500. So, um, but it's still, you know, whatever, still smaller. So in that case, you take all this information and you hit create mail labels. You get to select if you want it to be mailed to the listing address and you want it to be, or the owner at the owner's address, which we know is not always the property address, or do we want it to go to the owner at the property address? Um, and then you can choose right here where you replace the first line, the name, with something that says like name or current resident. We see those come in all the time, right? Or property owner or postal customer. I do not want to do that. Um, I don't want the first line replaced with anything, but you guys could choose to do that. You can remove duplicate results based on the unique property address. I would recommend that. Um, and only retrieve labels with valid zip codes. I would say that too. That means complete addresses and including so that whenever you go to mail something to these people that they actually receive it, okay? If you are going to actually send out letters in an envelope and you want to use in a, like an actual label, then here are all the options. You find your label size for the template and you go ahead and select it and center it or left, skip, all these things, right? And then generate your label in PDF format. And then that PDF file will be what you print after you put your label um, paper in, okay? I'm not gonna use that at this time. I would rather take it, and there's other ways you can do it, but you can utilize this information as a CSV file as well. And so it's gonna take and it's gonna generate it that way. And I've got a file that I've already downloaded. I'm gonna open it up and see if, oh, it never opens it. But it does include the owner's name, the address, yada, yada. And so it does not include email or phone number, guys. These are just mail outs, okay? So, but the way I like to do it is I have, hmm, not at my hands, I have a little letter. It's got a picture of me. And, you know, it's branded and stuff. You could do that. If you make your um, search small enough and tight enough, like if you do the map one and you only want to farm or search a specific neighborhood, that would be okay because then you're going to have a smaller um, result grouping. And then you could handwrite them. But also if you take it in, in the PDF or the CSV file, you could put the CSV file in an Excel sheet and then you can keep up with, okay, well, you know, I did the search for 30 days back, so I'm only going to um, 
next time when I search it, I'm going to search from a new 30 day period. I'm going to make sure that if I have already mailed out somebody, something to somebody previously. So I don't know that I actually pointed that out um, in the time period here. Let's see. List, there was grid. No, canceled date, expired date expired date greater to your, here is where you can make that result a little bit smaller as well. You can choose to go back only two months, like to March 1st. So it'd be anything after March 1st that's expired. Um, I'd failed to show that to you guys earlier. So then if we change it to residential and we just change it to expired, and then let's say I just put Ocala, not relisted and a list price over 200, one, two, three. Sorry. Um, and I do the search, it should be a smaller grouping now. Yeah, only 76 people because I did the, the date. That was the step that I forgot. So he told you it was still new to me. Um, but if you put that date in there, then it's gonna make a smaller group and you could even simplify it, but you know, even more by changing, you know, like the top up here, it says there's a two bedroom, two and a half bath. I mean, if you're not interested in that, if you don't wanna, try and sell anything that's super old, go back. Here we go. You can change this to say, I think it was year built and now equal to, so greater than or equal to, you could say, hey, I don't wanna try and sell anything that's older than like 1980, right? Because whatever, or, you know, there you can change all the different fields and the values to look for what you're looking for. And, and utilize it to um, give you a search result that you can send out mailers or whatever the case is. Are there any questions? It's pretty simple, but I think it saves a lot of time. And I don't know why I've never even clicked inside the IMAP application. Um, I think we're really fortunate. I remember when we joined with Stellar, everybody was like, man, you know, it costs a little bit more, but it's so much more worth it because they offer so many resources, right? And I think sometimes we get caught up in our everyday work um, that it, it seems overwhelming to learn a new process, but sometimes learning something new actually streamlines the process. And in this case, that's what it did. I spent an hour on a class, but I'm going to easily save myself time every month when I do my expired search um, and getting things out to my to my hopefully new clients. So um, if you don't have any questions for me, then I will say we're done because that's all I had to focus on today. But I think it's like great information. Please have anybody else that's missed the class join us and watching it on YouTube. Thank you for joining me, Valerie. Thanks for joining us, Tyra. Thank you. It was very informative. If you have any problems using it, because I know you jumped on a little bit later, but if you, you didn't catch it or if you need me to do it again privately, you know, I'll be available or you can watch the video on YouTube probably by the end of the day. Hey, Danielle, I was trying to get the click the stupid unmute button. Tyra, there is so much. I IMAP used to be the only thing that showed up. It wasn't a real whatever it is now. Yes. I'm as it doesn't it also show like the school districts mm -hmm. you can do like see right here underneath the search field like you could do by subdivision like yeah. let's say you wanted to look for a subdivision you would have to type the subdivision name in exactly but yes these are all the different ways you could search it let's see but even just type just hitting on imap on the the listing sheet oh yes a lot of information that I like better than whatever it is we use now, real realist or whatever. Uh -huh. Right. It all makes you into that, realist. That, that, those are my great conversations. Hey, Tyra, congratulations on your sales, sweetheart. Thank you so much. It was a journey, but I thank God they were able to get them a nice home for their family. That's yeah. a lot. You did a great job working for them. I know that <laughs> you went through a couple different houses and you were doing a lot of negotiating. So it just means oh, that you yeah. got them in the best house possible. So, right, well, y'all have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend, then I'll be back in Florida in June. <laughs> All right. Enjoy the grandbaby. Bye, everybody. Bye. God bless everybody. Bye.
Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This thing off. <laughs>